Hello, and welcome to the Just In Time Cafe's webinar. I'm Elizabeth Swan, co-founder of the Just In Time Cafe. I'll be your moderator today, and today's webinar is titled How to Learn Toyota Kata and Everyday Improvement uh, and Add Everyday Improvement to Your Lean Practice. Uh, today's presenter is Tracy Defoe. Welcome, Tracy. Oh, I unmuted just in time. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, no. Hi, thank you. I'm very, very pleased to be here. Uh, Tracy Defoe is an adult educator, a kata geek, the co-founder of the Kata Girl Geeks, the Kata School Cascadia. She's working me out with my consonants. <laughs> Tracy lives and Zooms in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, just a few housekeeping notes before we begin. You can ask questions anytime by entering them into the chat area. There's also a question area, but we'll be using chat throughout the webinar. Uh, if you can remember to address your uh, any, any questions or comments you have to panelists and attendees. So it's not just um, us gals that see it, it's everybody attending uh, because there's a lot of great questions, there's a lot of great comments. We kind of learn from each other in these, which is part of the fun. Uh, videos. Of our and Tracy's going to ask you questions, so you're going to be able to uh, throw answers into the chat. And then videos of these webinars are free. We post them on the Just in Time Cafe website. These usually go up Monday after the Thursday webinar. But if you registered for this uh, webinar, we'll send you an email with the link, uh, so you have access to that and you have a reminder. Uh, and for our first activities, we, we want to know where you guys are from. Uh, so if you could put into the chat uh, where you're from and we'll see, you know, how late are you up? How early are you up? Where are you in the world? And I can see uh, Stephanie from Ottawa. Thank you. Another good Canada representation there. You've got uh, Jacqueline is in Buford, Georgia. Awesome. Uh, Shane in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, William, welcome back. Howdy from Ottawa. We've got Eric, Naval Station, San Diego. Tracy O'Rourke must have had something to do with you being here. Uh, Colin, Greer, South Carolina. Gail, Ottawa. Friends from New Zealand. We're officially international, Tracy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, Tom in Gilbert, Arizona. Heather in Phoenix, Arizona. Christine in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Ama from Indiana. We've got Farah in San Diego. Welcome, Farah. Carlos in Tijuana, yes, another country. Uh, Kim in Michigan, Nick in Saskatchewan. Oh, and Kelly in Tokyo. Welcome, okay. Kelly, always giving us a good Japanese representation. We love that. Well, Tracy, with one successful experiment behind us, I hand Ooh. the a yield to you, a yield the floor. Okay, well, let's start going. Um, first, just a little bit about me. As you can see, um, I am Canadian. And I'm coming to you today from my home in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, on the unceded traditional lands of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish First Nations, where I was born as a white settler, and I'm really happy and proud to live and work. Uh, you can see some of my other things there. You can see that besides Cata Girl Geeks and Cata School Cascadia, I'm also um, a facilitator in the Cata Dojo, which is a coaching practice place. And um, in my professional life, I am a uh, adult educator who specializes in what people learn at work, which is probably all you need to know to ask, why are you interested in CATA? Because CATA is a really great adult education. So we have a poll question, and I'm going to ask Elizabeth to, I guess, launch that. There you go. What fits you? Um, are you curious about CATA? but don't know much about it? Are you learning the improvement kata now? Are you a kata coach who asks the five questions five days a week? Are you a continuous improvement professional and here because you want to learn kata? Or are you from Toyota and you're here to remind us that they do not teach the kata at Toyota? <laughs> and if you have an other, that is cool too. Um, okay, well, you're getting, I'm going to wait till we get a, little, a few more a few more votes and then I will end your poll and see what you got. Absolutely. Okay. Here. And here we go. Let's share those. 
Oh, curious, but have a little or no experience. That's fantastic. Thank you for coming. Currently in the improvement cata. And one other. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, well, thank you so much for taking for that. I will um, really take that into account and try to be really open to questions or comments from people who are new. And um, if you think I'm going too fast, um, just let me know, okay? Because um, I think the best learn, if you have a question, it's probable that other people have a question too. So that's why is this? Oh, there it is. Okay, so here's a little bit of the shape of the day or the session that I have planned. These are some of the questions. They think these were probably in the webinar and notice when you signed up. It's my intention to explain to you what the static card kata are and what do we mean by Toyota kata. Um, I hope to cover why you might want to learn this and what if what you might have to unlearn to learn this and how you can connect with the kata community. Oh, dear God. Okay. I don't know what happened there. We got an automatic change. What do I do to stop that? Um, I will hold the thing on it. So um, let's start with the first one. Why would you want to learn these patterns for daily improvement? Why would you want to develop scientific thinking in people and in yourself? Well, my friend and coach uh, and co-coach now, Hal Froelich, is in Washington State in the United States, just below the Canadian border, about half an hour from where I live. Um, he has this really great saying that he developed when he used to work at a local airplane manufacturing company in Seattle. And he said too often in his experience, PDCA became plan, discuss, complicate, and abandon. And whether it's plan, do, plan, do, plan, do, as I heard Katie Anderson say the other day, or if it's plan, discuss, complicate, abandon, CATA is the answer. If we're going to talk about CATA, we have to start with Mike Rother, because the CATA comes from research that Mike Rother did, and he has published three books. The original research report, which is Toyota CATA, the book that started it all. Um, you don't need to read that book now because in the Toyota CATA practice guide, he summarizes the research in the first about, in about three pages in the introduction. But the practice guide shows a learner and a coach how to do scientific thinking and all the practice routines of the improvement CATA and coaching CATA. And then there's also the book I always call the yellow book, how to expand your practice. It's about um, going up and down through an organization. So the Toyota Kata comes from research and Mike's questions, um, by the way, his original title wanted to be beyond what we can see. So we all know from continuous improvement and lean over the years that uh, we've seen what we can see at Toyota. The research question was around what we can't see, what's beyond what we can see. His two questions were, what are the unseen managerial routines and thinking that live behind Toyota's success with continuous improvement and adaptation? And the second question, which is the one that kind of brings us to the CATA, what can other companies or other individuals or other organizations, how can they develop routines, similar routines and similar thinking in their organizations? So what we have from the research are, are suggested, we call them starter CATA, routines, and ways to get to the kind of thinking that Mike saw in Toyota managers. So the kind of mentoring people, developing people, and having real daily improvement at the front line. So kata, if you're not familiar with the word, by the way, that's my Canadian accent. My friends who speak Japanese would tell me kata. It's kata is a way. It has two meanings. One of them is a method or a way, and the other one is a practice routine. So in um, the way to think about it, I always think is simple structured routine that you practice very deliberately and correctly to develop a new habit. And eventually you have new abilities. The goal of our um, Toyota Cata starter Catas is a scientific way of working and thinking to achieve amazing things and superior results. So I have some questions for the chat. Do you play piano? Have you ever played a sport? Can you drive a car? If so, you have probably learned beginner patterns, I, I, aka starter kata. So go ahead and tell us in the chat what experience you have with starter kata. And when I talk about this, I usually talk about my dad. My father was a golfer and he had a lot of routines for golfing, but he was also a musician, a professional musician. And every single day 
that he, well, since I knew him, but I think since he was about 12 years old until into his 80s, he practiced every day and he played scales. So whenever I hear a trombone play scales, I always am rushed back to my family home. And uh, right there I am as a little girl knowing my dad's home and he's doing his thing. So if you have learned something, you probably have learned some starter kata. Oh, shoot. I just got, skipped. Um, I got time uh, going here. You've got, this, hmm? go ahead. I think the slides are progressing on their own. So, so we may not have a, tons of time. You have poltergeist. Um, yeah. But you had Stephanie learning a language. Yes. Uh, and you had uh, Erica uh, instruments, including the trumpet. Uh, Jacqueline growing plants from seed. Uh, Tracy's learning to play pickleball. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> as, as many people who know her know. Uh, Dominique learned piano, flute, French horn, and languages. And Jacqueline Harder is curious now about pickleball. But, uh, and William was first exposed to kata when he was young and took jujitsu. Yes, a lot learned. of people who have ever done a martial art know, understand what we mean by we say we're going to teach you some kata and they will help you learn something else. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Kim learned to play clarinet and golf, but not at the same time. Right. So Mike likes to say that the starter kata are a methodology for developing people to meet tough challenges. And of course, as an educator, developing people has my interest. So what are the starter kata? We have a whole bunch um, that come together for the learner. We have the improvement kata pattern. We have a storyboard that you can think of as a kind of giant A3, if that makes sense to you. Uh, we have steps for process analysis. We have steps for establishing a target condition. We have our obstacle list and we have what we call the experimenting record, which I'm going to show you in a second. And the coach also has a starter kata, which is in the form of the 5Q question card, which, as you may know, has 11 questions on it. And um, we call that the coaching kata. And what you should feel or what you should get from your starter kata are kind of here on the picture on the right, where the learner is really reaching new heights and the coach is supporting and cheering them on. That picture is from the cover of the book, uh, Toyota Kata Practice Guide. Here's a version of the improvement kata. It's four steps, three of them involved in planning, one in making experiments. Uh, we understand the direction or challenge that will make sense to you if you have ever worked anywhere. Like, what are we trying to achieve? Where are we trying to get to? We spend some time understanding our current condition and studying it. And then this is kind of different than other improvement methods. We just established a next target condition. How do we want this process to be working? And what results do we want from it in a short period of time as we experiment? And usually for a beginner, that would be two weeks. Um, sometimes one week even. And then once we have established how we want this to work um, and what, what results we um, want to have or expect to have from having it work in that way, then we start experimenting. And here's a quick look at the question of the 5Q question card. By the way, all this stuff is very readily available on the Toyota Cat website, um, Mike Rother's website for free download. He has everything available under Creative Commons license. So here's your questions, the ones that just exactly matching the improvement kata. What's the target condition? What is your actual condition now? What did you plan as your last step? What did you expect to learn? What did you expect to happen? Um, then what actually happened? And what did you learn? What are you learning from what happened? And, um, and then we go to what is in your way? What obstacles are in your way? Which one would you like to address next? And therefore, logically, if that's the one and that's in your way, what's your next step? What do you expect to learn from taking that step? And then how quickly can we go and see what you are learning from taking that step? So that's the coaching kata, you know, doesn't look like rocket science. Here's what it looks like sort of in real life. These are two um, of my favorite learners. They're in Newfoundland, Canada at a training, but I just love how engaged they are. So here's a starter kata, the learner who is running the board uh, is establishing uh, experiments. So working forward from current condition to next target condition with different experiments. And we often see this shown as climbing a staircase because with everything you do, you have a different view forward, right? So I think that's the cool part, one of the cool parts. And what is the coach doing? The coach studies the learner and their learning zone. In yeah, education, we call that the zone of proximal development. Most people learn at the edge of what they already know. And the coach is looking at 
using the coaching kata, watching the board, seeing the way the learner describes obstacles, steps, even how they study the current condition. Oh, crap. Okay, here's another one. Answer in the chat. So um, why would you want to learn this? One of the things is it's every single day. So this is a, a clip from one of Mike Rother's videos in which he challenges us to go to daily improvement led by the people who work there towards a strategic objective. So um, answering the chat, if you are involved in the improvement, is it daily? Who, you know, uh, this would be a bit of a current condition for, for you or your organization. Who leads it? And how tied is your improvement to a strategic objective? You would be surprised how, fre how infrequently people achieve daily um, improvement often periodic, you know, like weekly or monthly even. So I don't know if people are putting something in the chat, but. Yeah, we've got, um, Jacqueline said it's done slowly and behind closed doors. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Jacqueline. Uh, Shane said daily, I often lead it. One of the main goals. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Jacqueline's not joking. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got some. We've got two ends of the spectrum. Right. Uh, William said we improve by creating a project with objectives. I don't know if that's daily or uh, periodic. So this is this photo is a screen grab from a video. But if you looked at Mike Rother's any of his talks, he he often draws this little thing saying, "What did we used to think Lean was?" And remember that he's somebody you know who used to go around and work with. Um, he and Jeff Liker used to go around and work with companies come back in three months and be disappointed that they hadn't maintained those improvements that they had put in place. Oh, okay, so I see the PowerPoint's telling me to hurry up. So what happens every day at the storyboard? The learner is learning about their process and thinking about their next step. And the coach is studying the learner and saying, okay, what's going on with that learner? And I always like to remind people that the coach can tell things about the learner's behavior, their thinking and their feelings by what happens at the board. And the coach is responsible for all of those things. Uh, you, should you might feel frustrated, but you should also end by feeling curious. You should feel supported and you should feel safe to put what you actually think on the board. Uh, also, we talked about scientific thinking. That's kind of a weird term. You might be familiar with the scientific method, but the scientific part of the improvement kata is right there at the PDCA cycles uh, record, because what happens is we have basically a, a hypothesis here. We have a side where you make a prediction. What do you expect to happen? You do a coaching cycle. You do your step or your experiment. Then you collect data or observations, or you describe what actually happened. And then uh, when we ask what was learned or what are we learning from that step, you evaluate and reflect. And so that's a, a hypothesis analysis study <clears throat> reflect step that is, you know, kind of a scientific thinking cycle. So this goes back to um, the learning part for me. So when there is a difference between what we expect to happen and what actually happened, then um, we have an opportunity for learning because it is in the surprise between what happened and what actually happened is when you say, hmm, or huh, or wow, that's when you have an opportunity to learn. If exactly what you predict actually happens, you just have data. And Mike likes to say, remembering that it's not about the coaching questions, it's not about the starter cat of patterns, but it's about the skills and the mindset that we leave behind. So in a way, the bigger goal for sure is to have a mindset in approaching the unknown at the edge of what you know. That's when the kata works the best. Okay, so if you are here because you already know about lean, you know, what do you have to learn to or unlearn? Because as an educator, I'm super interested in unlearning, by the way. Uh, what do you have to unlearn? So if you are currently focused on problems or finding waste or putting into place an action plan or deploying your lean tools or working from a to-do list, you may have to unlearn the impulse to do those things. So in Cata, we have obstacles to our next target condition and we look at what's in our way and we try to describe them in ways that are, um, so we can experiment against them. So for instance, um, on the left, is a list of the kind of obstacles you would find from somebody who was a lean expert who hadn't quite got the, got the handle of working at the edge of what they know. It is partly a list of solutions. 
there's no standard work. Uh, there's no 5S. Um, we don't have flow. The line layout isn't perfect. There's too many people. So as we work with a learner, we would want them to get, and this isn't even a perfect one, but it's a better list. We don't know how many people we need. We don't know how to assign tasks. We don't know the timing of the sub steps. So things like that. We don't know why the last step has the greatest time variation. If you put it in that, um, if you say, oh, I don't know why the last step has the greatest time variation, that's different than saying no time study, no standard work. So then we can explore lots of different reasons and angles on why that might be the case. So you're going to have to un unlearn your um, ability that. The other thing you might have to unlearn, and this one we recently um, at Cata School Cascadia, we welcome people who are doing coaches to come to a coaching 30 minute coaching talk, you know, just kind of like meet at the coffee, meet at the lunchroom once a week. And we've recently uh, met somebody who's been coaching a long time who never understood this difference. And for me, this is a really critical difference. The difference between aiming for a target and aiming for a next target condition. The target for your process is the score, right? How many things are we making per hour? Or um, what's your outcome metric? How many, what number do we want over the time? How many, how many do we make in an hour, in a second, in a day? But the next target condition is about how the process runs. It's the way we play the game, not just the score. And so we're really focused on the way we play, the way that process works, not just the score. Um, the th something I often think from my experience with lean improvements is it's quite easy sometimes to cheat to get the score, but it's very hard to cheat to get the process to run the right way. So. Um, and the block diagram here I've stolen from the Toyota Cata online course by Jeff Liker and Jim France. And I did that so that I remembered to mention later, one of the ways you can learn this, of course, is online. Uh, this is my teaching version of a learner storyboard. Uh, it is basically just a big A3, but we do always mention what we're striving to achieve up there at the challenge. Um, we have established our next target condition and it's how the process will work and how will it produce by the achieve by date. There will be a uh, performance metric and for uh, simplicity's sake, I said all assembly times will be under the demand rate in a sample little chart there. No more than um, three people in, in the cell. And just at the bottom is a little bit of a block diagram, which is a step-by-step -step process of how something works. Beside it, you can see as an example of what we'd expect to find in a current condition, You'd performance up to today, quality up to today. Sometimes I even ask now, so is it now 11.30 for me? What's the current condition now? Uh, and a process block diagram of how the process is working now. The experimenting record is the one I just showed you. Each step is a horizontal line and the coach will always ask, um, what did you expect? What happened? What did you learn? What's the difference? Also, I always ask, did you learn anything else? Because quite often people learn something about themselves, and that's really super cool for me. And then um, the obstacles parking lot, what's in your way, goes down there at the bottom. So that's your storyboard. But the thing I think you have to most unlearn, and if I ask coaches, which I sometimes do, you know, what was it like for you to become a, a cat coach versus a lean expert or a consultant or even a continuous improvement manager or director? One of the things you have to learn is you have to unlearn being the person with all the answers. You have to unlearn anticipating the solution because you need to hold your thoughts and let the person who is working in the process, often it's the supervisor or even the team lead or a line manager who is doing the CATA board, you have to let them come to the um, study the process, decide on the next target condition and work their way forward because it's actually the people who work there who make these daily improvements and little experiments. And through that, they learn. And that way you don't have, um, you know, that David Marquet turn your ship around uh, atomic um, submarine guy who said, you know, if I'm the only one who gives the orders, we only using one brain here and we mm. want to use all the brains in this way, you get to use all the brains. So you got to hold your thoughts and you got to learn to zip it. This is really hard. And when you read the reflections from coaches, they often say, it's killing me not to tell them this or that. But it's better in terms of sustainability and long-term, like holding, holding the improvement if the people there find their way there. So Tracy, I'm going to break that, the zip yep. it rule and mm, ask sure. you, 
just some good questions are coming up. I thought I'd uh, see yes, if you want please. To field yeah, them. yeah. I'll just so, see if I can hold it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the slides are moving. Slides, on I don't you. know where there's timing. I have no idea where that came from, but okay. Uh, I, it's it's a poltergeist. William is asking how much continuous reputation repetition in your work is needed to make use of kata. If each day is different, could you use kata effectively? Yes. Okay. Is that a yes, no question? That's a yes, yes. no question. And you, yes. you may expand on that, William, later, but the, your simple answer is yes. Another question from Craig asking, are run charts and control charts used for current conditions? Yes. And yes. Yes, of course. Um, in fact, the run chart is the simplest way to show how a process is operating over time. And so um, every single learner I have has a run chart of some kind in the current condition. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Carry on. So that's a really good you. place. No, that's a really good place for me to say something that's later. Okay. So one of the cool things about the CATA is it plays well with all your lean tools. You do not have to leave behind any of the things you already know about lean, except that you are the one person who should decide. So it's very common to either um, step out of the coaching role and teach somebody something. Uh, recently, I had to teach somebody actually what a run chart was. Um, they never didn't know it, never seen it. And um, so, okay, great. So I want you to, to keep track over time of the performance of this thing that you're focused on. And we're going to draw these two lines, one's up and one's down. And here's, you know, what, what do you want to do it every day? Do you want to do it half day? So we worked it out and I taught him to do it. And the next time I came back, he had been recording his cycles. Um, so it's not unusual to meet people who've never done a run chart, but if it's your work and you're plotting it, that run chart is super meaningful. Um, so yes, run charts. Yes. All the lean tools. Thank you. We just don't teach them until we need them. And that's also really great adult education. We never take people aside, teach them the 12 most popular lean tools and then start CATA. We just go ahead and learn them as we need to use them. Are you saying just in time? at the exact perfect moment. <laughs> yes. I am saying just in time. And we usually meet in the lunchroom. No, I'm just kidding. So um, the good thing is in adult education, we know a lot about unlearning and undoing. So breaking habits and learning new ways. It's very common for people to develop from childhood um, erroneous concepts. And I could talk about that for half an hour, but I won't. That's a whole nother webinar. But I will recommend this book, The ABCs of How We Learn. And what we know about unlearning is there are three things required for unlearning. One of them is precision of thought. So you have to have, get specific. And that's something your coach will do with you. They will, they will bring you in and in and in until you are precise. The other thing is you have to be presented with an alternative concept that you have the opportunity to explore and do and work with. The CATA gives you that and time and repetition, right? So depending on how ingrained your habit of throwing up your hand and saying, me, 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 I know how to solve this. And the answer is 5S and Kanban. Um, depending on how old that habit is, uh, it will take time and repetitions. And that's why um, a coach is an excellent uh, person to have with you, of course. And um, Mark Rosenthal said the other day, the coach is not a sensei. The coach is, I always get this wrong, Sam say maybe? Anyway, a student who's been around longer. We are all students who've been around longer. And usually, uh, somebody like me, I'm a learner, I'm a coach, I'm also a second coach. So I would do all three roles. So the other way I think that you could, so how are you, okay, that's how you unlearn. What do you need to unlearn? But how are you going to learn? Well, good news, the CATA community is awesome. So if you have experience in the CATA community, tell us about it in the chat. You know, do you have a coach? Do you belong to CATA Girl Geeks? Have you, do you belong to a CATA school? The CATA community is great. So this word cloud came from the six month, I think, or maybe it was the one year anniversary of the CATA school Cascadia coaches community call, which we do every Friday. And I just love the way people described that just that half an hour a week with, um, with their coaches. And I, I particularly love, you know, yes, welcoming, insightful, friendship, caring, fun, amazing, but I particularly love surprisingly informative. Oh. You've got um, folks saying uh, you've got um, people in KGG, kind of girl geeks. Yes. 
You've got people wanting to learn more about kata. Uh, you've got uh, Robin, completely new to kata. Uh, coach is Deandra Wardell. Uh, kata, uh, Ooh. Yes, kata royalty. And uh, yeah, so a lot of not formal, but interest or very, very new. Yeah. So if people are new, then I'm going to suggest that you find the kata community. 2019, I presented, hold on, I'm just going to tell my family that I am live. Nope, they are too noisy. They can't hear me. I hope you can't hear them. So in 2019, I presented this slide at Catacon and said, hey, it's come to my attention that some people are cataing by themselves or with a single buddy in secret at work without their boss knowing. And that got me really interested in how we support people in learning the kata if, um, if they're isolated. So one of the ways we do that, of course, is something new in the last few years, kata schools. So kata schools aren't really, um, kata schools are a way for the community to identify itself and get together around the world. And you can see down here in Australia, that's actually kata school, Australasia, I think it's called. That's where France was from. We have kata schools in the Middle East, all different places in Europe, South America. There's one in Brazil. And there's only two so far in North America, our kata school Cascadia on the West Coast and the kata school Midwest. But I know people who are bringing online kata schools in the Southeast and kata schools in other spots in America. So a kata school, if you just Google kata school, uh, you'll probably find some people near you who are practicing the kata and who are, you know, volunteering or creating opportunities for you to meet other people. This is a picture of my of Cata School Cascadia on a Friday. And I just thought I'd show it to you so you can see that we have fun. Like there's nothing more fun than getting together with people who share an interest of yours that you're interested in. And um, yeah, so we have fun. This is the Cata School Cascadia purpose. So if you find a Cata School, you'll find a purpose. And uh, here's our purpose. The Cata School Cascadia exists to rock people's worlds by supporting their learning and sharing in the starter kata and beyond. We grow scientific thinkers who make the world a better place. We're based in the Pacific Northwest of North America, also known as Cascadia, and we welcome learners from around the world. So that's us. Cata Girl Geeks is also a community that if you're female, uh, you're welcome to join a group of women helping women learn the kata. This is Gargi and Julie, two people, and there's me at the bottom, two people that I am um, in a coaching, a learning group with for the last few months. And I think you can just see from their faces, there's Julie at her board. She runs a um, paper board, like a, a physical in the real world board. A lot of people run virtual boards. But I think you can see the relationship, the fun, and the caring that there is in a coach-learner relationship. Also, uh, another kind of group to connect with, the Cata Coaching Dojo. This is a list of, uh, a list. This is a photo of Cata Dojo facilitators. I'm sure, Elizabeth, you recognize some of these people as Cata friends or maybe lean friends. I do. Yeah, sure. So there's Dorsey Sherman, for example, from Women in Lean. There's Julie Simmons, and there's DeAndre again. Uh, Tilo Schwartz in the back. Anyway, so um, Cata Coaching Dojo is another way. And here's a picture of some Cata geeks at a Cata geek meetup. So the Cata community is there, open arms. And um, I think it will be not super hard for you to find them. So uh, so if you're interested in learning the Cata, a couple things to know. It's um, if you want to learn it, the rule is, or the recommendation is every day, no stopping. Uh, use the starter kata as a learner and use the storyboard and all of those starter forms. There is a progression right now. I hope you suddenly become aware of it. Um, I hope that uh, after you become aware of it, you find a way to be able to do it before you start to try to teach it. We do have an international kata code. Conditions are unpredictable. Enjoy that learning zone. Follow the improvement kata steps. Beginners practice kata exactly and have a coach be a coach. So this is where we started. Um, I think I've explained a little bit about what the starter kata are and what Toyota kata is. Remember, it's a framework from research, okay? It's not, um, so it's helpful for learning, but it's not, it's not practiced at Toyota. Uh, it is extracted from Toyota. Um, I hope I've told you a little bit about why you might want to learn it to achieve real daily practice of improvement by the people who work there. Oh, and I said, if time allowed, we would tell some stories. 
That's me and Deandra. Uh, so. We've got a question for you, uh, yes. Tracy. If, if Lean is new to my organization, should I hold off introducing improvement slash coaching kata? Okay, so that's a really interesting question and was for a while quite controversial. And so I will give you the usual answer. It depends. Um, I am currently coaching at two organizations that don't know anything about lean. And I mean nothing. Like, remember, I just mentioned I had to teach somebody a run chart. So um, what you have to understand is flow. I can you hear my dog. Hold on. I'm gonna... <laughs> um, <laughs> what you have to understand is flow. So you don't need to know about waste and you don't need to know about moose lean tools, but you have to understand what we're after is flow. So I usually do a little introduction to some of the principles of lean and then we learn the kata and we go ahead. And it's also possible to learn them as you go because we step in and out of that teaching relationship. So I have some stories and I'm just going to show them to you and then maybe if you can talk about what they want to talk about. One of the best ways to start is a stable day. I also um, have um, somebody tracking jobs every day, part order supporting production, um, combining two cells so that people could have more flexible work hours and they could have more flexible translation uh, production. We usually start with a, a one month starter project such as um, saving money, working out, um, hydrating, finding a job or being tired. At the end of the day, I can tell any of those stories. And um, I have so, I've coached somebody to live debt free, to get a healthy weight, to find a path after university, or to cope. Uh, I didn't actually cope. I coached this last one, but it's a really great story of um, coping with a really stressful life situation of a um, prenatal surgery. So I'm happy to just take some questions now before we get to, or I could tell one of those stories like, also, some of the people on this call have really great stories. I'm sure they could signal us to share. Um, go ahead and tell one of your favorite stories. I'd love to hear it. I know they okay. would love to hear it. Um, well, actually, the, this, this, I'm going to tell this one because it's really funny and simple. So we usually tell people, because I, I don't know, I uh, don't want to do a deep one, but this one. Okay, so we had the CEO, the owner, actually, of a company, who, and we asked them to pick a, an improvement he could work on just for 10 days so he could um, learn the improvement kata. And when you first start, the project isn't super important. We usually ask people to do a personal project because it's completely within their control. So he kind of hummed and hawed around and, and finally said, everyone tells me I need to drink more water. So I'm going to take drinking. And I can't remember whether there was like 100 ounces. He took some shot, but he was like 6'5". He was a really big person. And, um, you know, so we worked out, so he worked out like a target condition of how much water he wanted to make. And then we worked out a process for when he would have it and it would always be with him and whatever. About three days in, um, he came to his session super excited because his back didn't hurt anymore. So he had had back pain for years and his doctor had been telling him for years he needed to drink more water. And, um, so here we go. He started to drink water and he had, didn't have back pain. It's like that, you know, the unintended consequence that was a really great one. So then he became super enthusiastic about drinking water. He started to carry around it's this giant, I mean, it's a really big guy, but like this giant water thing and um, had it with him everywhere he went and in the car and everything. So it was one of those ones where we thought, drink more water. Okay. And it turned out to be really life-changing. I also really like to tell the one about my son. So maybe I'll tell that one. Where's that? Oh, find a path after university. Um, yeah, so my youngest son graduated, was graduating university, thought he wanted to go to grad school. And um, he came home for the summer, as you do if you've been in dorm or living in a place or something. And I found myself wanting to nag him and tell him what to do. And so I asked him if I could catacoach him. And in doing that, um, I basically changed our relationship completely. So when you're the cata coach, you agree um, that the, the, we agree that we would only talk about this. Uh, this isn't the truth for most cata coaches at work, but we would talk about this only during the coaching cycle. So he started a board and he started deciding, trying to investigate what he didn't know about grad school, what he didn't know about job market, what he didn't know about some of the things he thought he wanted to study. 
And really quickly, I stopped asking him any questions about it, except at the catterboard. And in doing that, um, he was freed up to actually explore himself without his parents. I mean, he's 21 or 22 years old at the time. And I learned a whole new level of parenting, which was respecting his need to learn and grow. And I think that is true of many people who start to practice the kata, that you realize how much you were rushing in with solutions or how much you offered people unwanted advice <laughs> or how much you, um, you thought people needed to hear your opinion. And practice, being a kata coach, you will learn to zip it and listen better. So there's those two. Those are some helpful ones, I think. Um, oops, I was going to tell one from you. Yeah. So, okay, the stable day. And so if you're sitting there thinking, how do I start this? What do I do? I think um, Hal Froelich and I have been using the stable day as an entry point to understanding the kata for quite a while at work. So, um, you know, what prevents you from having a predictable, calm, um, stable day? So, you know, what is it in your day that is making you crazy, making you tired, keeping you late, causing you stress? So if you take the challenge of a stable day where, let's say, 80% of your time is spent on predictable uh, things that you're actually part of your job, um, that's often a kind of way we look at an 80-20. And then you started, start to study your current day just by writing down what happens and whether or not it was expected or unexpected and how much time it was and maybe how you felt. Um, We've been using that one for a while. It's an excellent way to understand why studying your current condition and then using that, the information to set a next target condition uh, can be a way to start to understand what's happening in your company. Because of course, what happens is if a bunch of people are doing this, as, as has been going on for us for a few months, uh, uh, maybe six or eight months, we've been doing this in different places the same broken system show up on a lot of people's unstable day. And you find out who is interruptible, who is, um, uh, who is coming to other people who's, who's, you know, anyway, causing people stress. So we did this with the CFO of a, a, everybody in the company who was doing cat learning cat. was doing it. The CFO of the company particularly had a huge light bulb moment with stable day when she realized that five of her eight hours of the day were either dealing with interruptions, firefighting other people's crises that weren't her job um, or fix or reworking things where people were giving her imperfect information. And as she started to work through and then, you know, dig a bit deeper and categorize them and dig a deep, bit deeper and figure out the processes that were behind them and stabilizing each one of those, uh, she gained back an enormous amount of productive time of her day. She didn't have to stay late anymore. She didn't have to stay on the weekend for months. And she became a real huge cat convert. <laughs> and we also identified who wasn't actually doing their job, but running to her with, um, things and she would just zip leave her stuff and go and help people so if you're wondering what's a way in to doing that if you don't have like a giant strategic corporate goal yet understanding what's stable and unstable in your day will point you towards the processes that need to be stabilized before they can be improved so those are a couple i think it would be great to just take some questions now wonderful so Jacqueline is asking, you know, if we're new to Carta, Carta, where do we start? Do we start by finding a coach or should I review resources on my own and find someone to coach, find someone to coach um, or take a course? So you could take a course. So here's the thing. There's many routes to learning, right? <laughs> uh, and certainly 10 years ago, we all just read the book and got together with somebody in practice, and it was hard to find an experienced or competent coach. Um, so the, what I would say to Jacqueline is, if you are so inclined to join a group, you could join Category Geeks. It just, uh, I think it's I want to join at CategoryGeeks.com and get invited to an onboarding meeting. Um, and that's an uh, online group. Um, but if in person, depending on where you are in the world, there may well be CATA coaches or CATA practitioners nearby. And we are generally a caring and generous community. Uh, and so you might find somebody who will coach you. So, uh, so it will help their learning, like as a beginner coach. Uh, or if you're from an organization with money, you might be able to find a coach and pay the coach. 
Um, and the other way people sometimes learn is they get together with two or three other people and they learn together. And if you're going to do that, you need to sort of standardize your practice and make sure that you are following the starter kata, like so that you're getting to current target condition, for example, and not just target. Uh, the kata mm. schools almost all offer beginner training, um, very low cost or free. And there are also paid courses if you if you feel the need to get um, papers. <laughs> a paid course will probably give you papers. So those are some of the ways for sure that you could start, but ask me again, like put a probing question if that wasn't enough. Good. Thank <clears throat> you, uh, Tracy. Um, another question from both Gail and Carlos is, can you talk about using kata for a non-repeating process? It's not clear to me how that works. Okay. Um, uh, non, can you, so are we talking job shop non-repeating process? Or are we talking like, um, yeah, maybe sort of if we can get an example. Life scale? Like, give me an example. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Carlos or Gail, if you want to enter an example in there and I'll go to another question. You've got a lot of people loving wait, your let, stories. Yes. Wait, let me just say mm. uh, to Carlos and, okay. Do you, do you not think you can use lean in a non-repeating process? Okay. So, <laughs> uh, you're they, posing, okay. Fair because, enough. Because, um, you know, there's answers, sort of standard answers to that, because inside every non-repeating process, there are things that repeat, right? Uh, and so, and if the process doesn't repeat, then I would either go up or down a level to find the thing that is worth working on and stabilizing. Right. I might add to that just quick that the kata, the women's community in particular, uh, is very rich with stories of people who practicing the kata has had personal benefit, personal, mm -hmm. emotional benefit, a stabilizing benefit, because when, and I can tell a story about myself in that regard. Um, I don't know if you heard my puppy whining, but I have the puppy, but before that I had an older dog and the older dog blew out both his knees. So he had to have double knee surgery. Uh, this was very distressing. <laughs> and, um, but I was a, a pretty long term cat coach by this point. So I had a board, I ran a huge board in my house about the dog about the surgery, about the meds, the rehab, the walks, everything. I was cutting the rehab process. And um, when he went for the second surgery uh, on his uh, second knee, the vet phoned me and said, oh, I'm really sorry, but we put your dog under anesthetic and we put his knee up in the jig that held, holds it while we do the surgery. And when we shaved his legs, we found uh, two tiny little pinpoint dots uh, that we think might be uh, staff. And so we are, we've stopped the surgery. We're going to revive the dog. Please come and get him. And we'll have to do this again another day. And the first words out of my mouth were not, oh my God, the poor dog, or oh, oh, there goes $500. The first words out of my mouth were, well, that's a new obstacle. And I totally credit the cat with giving me the pause time, the mindset, and the attitude that it's just an obstacle, we'll learn about it, we'll figure it out, and we'll get there. So um, uh, you don't have to tackle a non-repeating process to learn the improvement kata. You could tackle yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah. And to that point, uh, Gail offered a discussing a one-off work task. And what you just described is a one-off task. You're That's not going to do that task. again. Yeah. Um, you know, a thing to be done, delivered rather than a process to improve. Yeah. To, a way to work through that one-off task. I, I think that's a great, um, that's a great example. But yes. you'll get as a learner, as a starter learner, I would say as your coach, no, let's not do that one. Let's get the benefit of the run chart. Let's get the benefit of the reps, or as my friend Hal likes to say, the at-bats. You want as many at-bats as you can get as a, as a beginner so that you get the habit, the repetition, the cadence, the cycle of the, the ask the questions right on the board, take mm. the step, reflect, ask the questions right on the board, take, you know, you want the cadence. So um, pick something you do every day. I mean, I kind of famously, because I tell the story all the time, when I was a beginner, one of the kata I did was I catted how I dry my hair. So I wanted to get it down from 22 minutes to, or 24 minutes to um, under 10. And um, I wanted to you do a process that involved machines. So I had two different hair dryers. One was a blowy kind, one was a roller kind. 
and I got my hair drying down to eight minutes with pretty good quality. And it was only because I wanted to study machine time. So you could kata the way you wash your hands during COVID, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's pretty much unlimited. Um, and the more you repeat it, the better and easier and faster because you'll get more reps, right? You just want reps. Yeah. You've got a question from Stephanie. I find it's oftentimes difficult for senior leaders I'm coaching to determine their target conditions. Yeah, and what gonna... advice do you have on that? Um, senior leaders who have trouble establishing a next target condition. Is that what the question? It's, it's, yeah. Tr- having trouble uh, determining their target conditions. Yes. The senior leaders, senior leaders often have trouble determining the challenge. Like I, there's a whole cat discussion around helping senior leaders determine what the challenge should be. Um, you don't do the next target condition until you have a good handle on your current condition. So senior leaders who are having trouble determining their next target condition are probably don't have a full grasp of their current condition. So as a coach, the rule is if you're having trouble at target condition, you go back and look at current condition and say, do we need to narrow? Do we need to go deeper? Do we need more data? Do we have the right data? Like you would just reflect on that and you would look like the dynamic is current condition. You look at your challenge and say, okay, in regards to the challenge, what am I focusing on? What do I want information on? Why can't I get my hand? There it is. And then, <laughs> uh, you know, um, it's a coaching skill to determine which aspects of current condition become part of car- target condition. What if they have trouble stating their challenge? Oh, she says challenge is what I meant, not target condition, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> um, yes. So we've had so many conversations at the coaches uh, dojo about this one. Um, they need help, right? <laughs> so then you step out of your coach role and you put on your consultant role or your helper role. Or you coach them through that for sure. And I would say if your organization is new to the CATA, like don't do a five-year goal. Like take a three-month challenge. The challenge doesn't have to be gigantic. I mean, I think the book says six months to three years or something. So what? Like, you know, you're learning, you're flipping tires. Take a challenge that's like a month, two months, three months. Make it really in close and have learn with it and have some success. So I think the word you know, challenge is kind of a step below a vision and, but it could easily be something small, like drying your hair in under 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so if, you know, and for, if you're like, it's summer. So maybe the challenge is like um, getting all the, everybody's vacation done and having all the functions still work during the summer. Like I would take it that way as I would, I would bring it in. Oh, oh this is almost always a coaching strategy. If something seems hard, Bring it in, narrow it down, make it small. Um, Okay, so let's see one last question and then we'll give them a little preview of what's what's to come at the cafe. But um, no, I got to answer Mike's question. Yeah, no, this is an excellent question. Mike has asked, why is current condition listed as number two and target condition listed as number one on the storyboard when we all know you do current condition before you do target condition in the steps of the improvement kata. I actually phoned Mike Rother about this when I read the book, because among other hats that I wear, like I'm a literacy lady, right? I'm an expert in reading. So it doesn't make sense to me that you would keep the card one way and the other one. And Mike said to me, this was so nice. You can switch it if you want, but (laughs) the storyboard is laid out in the direction of, in the way the coach's questions are asked. So we always ask, what's your target? What are you aiming for? Then we ask, where are you now? Then we ask, what was your last step? What did you learn? Okay, what's in your way? What, you know, what's your next step? That's the way we do it. So the storyboard is laid out according to the coach's question. So those numbers are the coach question numbers. And if you were really eagle eye, Mike, um, you would see that I had the challenge listed as question zero. Because not everybody asks the challenge every single day. But if you do, you ask it first before one. Nice. And the people who taught me always ask the challenge. So the first time I went to a catacon and they weren't asking the challenge, I put up my hand and said, what about the challenge? And it goes, oh, yeah, that's question zero. You can ask it if you want. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 
Um, yeah, that's the one I was going to pose because I know that that's the thing that I think strikes a lot of us in terms of the order of events. So thank you for, for taking that one on. Um, so can you pop up the screen for two seconds and we'll just let them Ooh, know yeah, what's to come? Yes, and then I can. we'll see if we can fit a, a one or two last questions. In. Sure. And I was inviting people to put what they expect, what they learn and uh, put what you learned in the chat. Cause I'm interested always to know that. And yeah. There we go. That's up. Oh, I had another poll question, but we'll do your what's coming in case we don't have time. So yeah, just to let you, just let you guys know, there's another uh, two wonderful members of our community, Karen Ross and Jessica House. Uh, in two weeks, we'll put on a webinar, how to create psychological safety at work using the five C's. And this grew out of a lot of people's trepidation about going back into the physical workspace. And we have the, you know, if we have five S, those of you familiar with the technique for a physical space, to be safe, uh, and they're applying uh, five C's to address uh, what makes us feel safe personally. Uh, so this mm -hmm. one, I'm really looking forward to. Um, and here is the link to that if you want. Uh, the other thing we wanted to let you know is that our latest podcast just came out yesterday. Um, and this one is a wonderful episode, including uh, Tracy and I, we, we spoke with Katie Anderson about her book, uh, the one-year anniversary, what she's learned. Uh, and also we talked about an app that was a game app that helped a remote team feel closer than they did when they were together. So that's fascinating. Uh, so that review's in there. And then also we asked people, how do you remember what you want to know? Uh, and that uh, included apps and techniques and tips. And so that's in there too. So here's a link to that. Um, and let's go back to some questions, yeah, we, you can leave that up and we'll just see okay, sure. a few more. We can get a couple more questions in there. Um, I did have that poll about, uh, did you learn anything? Oh, let's do that. Run it. Yeah, let's we should do, do that. that. So let's Because if we do it at the here. beginning, it's always nice to do it at the end. So how'd we do? All right. Uh, how'd we do today? I'm more confused than ever. <laughs> I learned less than I expected. Uh, it was what I expected. It was better than I expected, so it was good or it was exceptionally good because I learned something. There you go, uh, that's your poll. That's great. Uh, well, you certainly uh, ignited an incredible amount of discussion and fabulous questions. Uh, great, um, uh, if you wanna get a hold of me, which I don't think we said, but you can always get me at uh, cataschoolcascadia.org, it's a hyphenated, uh, or you can find me through my company, my, my um, consulting company is called The Learning Factor. Okay, so let's share results of that. Oh, well, lots of people said they learned something. And some people who are used to the excellence that I put out there said it was what I expected. So that's <laughs> awesome. And then there's a few people in the middle. That's great. Fantastic. Thank you for participating in this, in that. And I think what I can't actually see my digital clock, but that I think brings we must us, be coming up. Yeah, that, we are exactly at the top of the hour. Tracy, that was riveting. And thank you so much. And thank all of you for participating and putting your thoughts, your questions out there. The, this community is always so generous and engaged. Um, and we're thank you so forward. much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, you've got lots of folks calling, uh, messaging you of how great this was. So uh, take care, everybody, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you.